Hi again then guys and welcome to another look back to the past of the Gran Turismo franchise to the second game once again to a car which I would put in the broad category in GT2 of being a real world car. The kind of thing that isn't a concept, it's not a one-off, it's not a race car of some kind, it's a car that you can actually legitimately see on the street. And GT2 was a fantastic example of a game that had loads of cars like that, not just Asian market, but Europe and America as well. And this is, I would say, one of those cars that is easy to forget was even in the game, because it is a sleeper. Mercedes AMGs do tend to be somewhat understated, especially from this generation. And of course, the vehicle in question is the E55 AMG. Now, we do actually have another E55 later in the series, which was introduced, I believe, in GT4, and continued into GT5 and 6, which was also the E55, but that was, of course, the later generation. And incidentally, that generation of E55 is the same underlying car that Mercedes based the CLS 55 on, which is actually one of my personal favorite AMGs. This one, though, is decidedly more old school in comparison, and of course the E-Class, for those who don't know, falls in the center of the line for Mercedes. It's the equivalent to the BMW 5 Series, the Audi A6, for instance. It's that level of car. It's more luxurious and larger than the C-Class, but not necessarily the top-tier luxury contender that an S-Class would be. And of course the S-Class is not in this game. As far as I can recall, I don't think we've ever had an S-Class in Gran Turismo at all, in fact, and I'd certainly love to see one. But as far as this one goes, its main rival, apart from the obvious choice of something like the BMW 7 series, for instance, in the game, which technically isn't a rival, but it's good enough, the biggest rival, I would argue, actually comes within Mercedes itself, because we also have the C43. AMG. Smaller engine, smaller car, but interestingly, that car can actually be tuned to be better than this one in some ways. And I'm not just talking about weight. Yes, it is lighter, but curiously, the C43 can also be more powerful by a significant margin, 522 horsepower fully tuned to this car's 497. And it seems almost strange these days to have a car in Gran Turismo that has less than 500 horsepower fully tuned despite the fact that it's already a 5.4-litre Mercedes-AMG V8. But of course, tuning wasn't what it is now back then. And in terms of the spec, as I mentioned, it does have just under 500 horses when you fully tune it, 497 to be exact. Unsurprisingly for an AMG, it has a very healthy amount of torque, 461 pound-feet. And interestingly, even the weight is not that bad. It's nowhere near as heavy as you'd probably think. You'd easily assume probably two tons, maybe even more. But actually, no, when you drop the weight, it's 1,521 kilos, which is really good, actually. That's an excellent weight to be working with. And of course, when it's stock, it's heavier, but we are talking with tuning. Now, when that tuning is applied, even if you don't go too crazy on the settings themselves, like camber and the diff and all that kind of stuff, what is the car actually like? Because in these older Gran Turismo games, there are three manufacturers in particular who I would lump in the same unfortunate category. And I believe I've actually mentioned this on the channel before. And they are Mercedes, Jaguar, and Aston Martin. Even as far back as this second game, I believe probably the first one as well, these were the cars that almost always had six-figure price tags, which, in terms of how fast they actually were, didn't seem all that fair all the time, and although, yes, they are very expensive in real life, so it wasn't an illegitimate price, it does put at something of a disadvantage given that many of the Japanese options and even American options were better and, crucially, far cheaper. So especially a, a lower-level driver, a kid, for instance, playing the game, well, of course they're going to buy whatever's cheaper. However, this car is 153,000 credits which is very hefty for a car that doesn't even have 500 horsepower fully tuned. So the question remains, should you actually buy one? What is the car like to drive? Well, I'm glad to report it feels fantastic. In fact, it's a great car. Across the board, I love the manners of this car. The brakes are surprisingly powerful. It has a good level of grip, and I'm actually going to return to that point in a second. The handling is smooth, which isn't too surprising. But what is potentially surprising is that it is a forgiving car. It's a good track car. It feels fantastic on a number of different circuits. Even though it doesn't have the most power in the game, it certainly is no slouch. And the fact that it's not as heavy as you'd think means that even though, yes, it's a large boxy four-door, it actually handles itself very well. 
To go back to that point that I mentioned about the grip though, that is the one potential downside, at least the one that I would note the most, and that is that on certain corners, it does have a tendency to gradually oversteer more and more to the point where you don't really notice it, and then suddenly you realize that the back end is stepping out, and the problem then comes in because the car is long, rear-wheel drive, and heavier than some, it tends to want to continue that momentum into a full-on spin. And if you can hold a drift, well then that's great. You can probably right the car and carry on driving, but for most of us, it tends to creep up so gradually that you will probably spin out in the car. However, I will say that this falls into a similar category for me personally to stuff like the aforementioned BMW 7 Series, even the 8 Series to some degree, and a number of the other cars which I actually love were in this game, wherein I would specifically recommend a car like this to somebody who likes the idea of it, maybe they already like the car, and they want to try it out. Then the racing is just a bonus. Either way, you'll be happy with it if you already like the car. Whereas if you're buying a car just to be the fastest or just to win loads of events, well then you could probably give it a pass. It's more that kind of machine. But that's it for this review. I would certainly love to see more Super Saloons come back to the game, and I know many of you guys would as well, stuff like the BMW M5, etc. But for now, that's it for this review. Of course, I'll see you guys next time. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.